Today on Across the Fence, commemorating one of the greatest battles ever on Lake Champlain. We'll explore the 201st anniversary of the Battle of Plattsburgh from the War of 1812. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. The War of 1812 is sometimes referred to as America's Second War of Independence. It was fought between American and British forces over the right of the United States to carry on trade without interference from the British Navy. By September of 1814, thousands of British soldiers in a flotilla of Royal Navy ships entered Lake Champlain from Canada. The intent was to reach New York City and divide our infant nation in two. As we know from history, the British were defeated decisively in what was known as the Battle of Plattsburgh. The battle's 201st anniversary will be marked with a reenactment and special events around the city of Plattsburgh from September 10th through the 13th. To find out more about the battle and the commemoration, I'm joined by two guests. Don Wickman is an historian and director of the Kent DeLord House Museum, and Sandra Geddes is the promotion and special events coordinator for the city of Plattsburgh. Thanks so much for coming in. Now, Don, as a historian and director of the Kent DeLord Museum. Um, let's start a little bit talking about the history of the Battle of Plattsburgh and why that was so important. I think we can put it into a simple sentence mm -hmm. is that it was this battle that more or less triggered the British that it was time to um, come up with a peace plan. Mm -hmm. uh, wasn't the Battle of New Orleans afterwards in January of <clears throat> 1815 because peace had already been signed but the British definitely took a severe look at ending this war afterwards and uh, what occurred was that the British were coming south uh, from Canada toward Plattsburgh. It was a major port, and they were looking for control of Lake Champlain. Mm -hmm. And it was McDonough's fleet that defeated them, and because the British did not have control of the waterway, even though they had substantial land forces, um, it would have been for naught, uh, because you needed to control the waterway to control the Lake Champlain Valley. So, Sandra, when does the commemoration begin, and what will be happening in Plattsburgh? Well, the, this is the 201st uh, anniversary of the Battles of Plattsburgh, and now the city of Plattsburgh is actually hosting the event, whereas in the past 17 years of the commemoration, it was actually led by a large group of very passionate volunteers. Mm -hmm. So the city has taken ownership and is working with volunteers. Um, we have several events from the days starting September 10th through the 13th. Um, anything from reenactments to parade to um, concerts throughout the weekend. Um, the event actually kicks off on September 10th at 4 p.m. with the Riverside Cemetery Memorial, which recognizes those that fought in the battles on both sides. So we have dignitaries from Canada, Great Britain, and um, from Plattsburgh that will be there to um, commemorate these lost lives. Now, what also is happening as part of the commemoration? I understand that there's a parade. Yes, there's a parade on Saturday at 1 p.m., and uh, it is the best parade in Plattsburgh. We have um, 200 reenactors that will do bits and pieces throughout the parade, but we also have six pipes and drums band. We have the Royal Marine Corps band that comes to us from Coburg, Ontario, which is just a sight to be seen. Um, but what's really exciting is um, we encourage people to always to stick around after the parade to check out what happens after that. Well, so what happens then, Don? Okay. All the bands collect in front of City Hall, and they do individual pieces, but then they get together and uh, do one um, massive presentation called a beat retreat. Uh, last year it poured, <laughs> and they weren't able to do it, but it's something that people should stay around for and witness. What does a beat retreat mean? Okay, it's just a formal, that's a good question, <laughs> and it's a just a formal ceremony of all the musicians getting together in almost like a little competition. That's pretty impressive. It is, and when you're figuring um, six pipes um, um, and drums bands together, that's going to be a wonderful experience for people to see. And so what's happening at the Kent DeLord House Museum during the commemoration? We're going to be overrun with reenactors again. Uh, the What's really special about this is that the British occupied the house and were on the grounds during 1814, and reenactors get very excited about being on more or less like hallowed ground. Mm -hmm. So they get excited. Uh, so we'll have those encampments right on the grounds. People will be able to walk through, talk to the reenactors, learn about 19th century life. And also do experience some things from, from that time. Exactly, exactly. Like what, what are some of the things that the um, people will be doing? Oh, um, well, they'll be, they'll be cooking, they'll be cleaning their weapons for sure, mm -hmm. uh, doing some drilling, 
And at the same time, we're also going to be attracting a lot of youths um, at a junior encampment, which is now in the third year running. Tell me about that. Okay, um, it's a great time. You know, I found out my love of history started when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And if you get youths involved in history early on, you got them for life, more or less. And here's an opportunity for the kids to come in, gain hands-on experience on 19th century crafts and trades, and hopefully they'll get bitten by that bug. Well, there's nothing like, I mean, talk about bringing history to life. I mean, it's more, rather than just reading about this event in a book or looking at pictures, you actually get to participate in it. Right, and for example, the boys and the girls, if they want to, can uh, wear um, uniform coats, shakos, the hats of the time period, mm -hmm. and find out what it's really like. Um, and also they'll be doing things like, uh, they will can do candle making, um, cooking, um, weaponry, there's some drilling, they'll learn about herbs, and as you can see by that image up there, is that it was really well attended last year. Uh, we were, it was packed, it was great. That's fantastic, and I guess the kids can even participate in the parade if they want to? Yes, they can, and what's more is that kids of all ages, not for the parade, but adults can come in and participate with their children. Mm -hmm. And now, Sandra, it's the naval battle from September of 1814 that gets the most attention, is that right? Yes, that's actually on Sunday during mm -hmm. Commemoration Weekend at noon, and we have reenactors come and um, they reenact the battle right um, by the Champlain Monument, which is on Cumberland Avenue in Plattsburgh. And it's an amazing event because we get um, not only do people get to witness it, but we also have it narrated by our city historian, John Kruger, who will walk people through the battle as it happens. And it's, it's an amazing experience, not just for adults to see, but also for kids. It's just a very cool thing to witness. Well, joining us now is Paul Miller, and Paul is obviously dressed a little differently than the rest of us. First of all, welcome to you. Thank you. Now, who do you represent? Um, I represent a private in the 1st Rifle Regiment of the United States of America and uh, they were very much involved in the Battle of Plattsburgh. Um, before the events which happened on September 11th, on September 4th, the 1st Rifle Regiment, there was about 110 of them under Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Appling, and um, they went out to Route 9 to sort of stop the British coming into Plattsburgh. They knew that there was no hope of keeping them out of the city, but they figured that they could stop them as long as they could so that they could uh, begin to defend the city. So that was what they first did. They led a, um, a strategic retreat, we'll call it, back into Plattsburgh. And then they were stationed in Bridge Street at a blockhouse, which is a large fortified building. And they successfully kept the British from getting to Bridge Street, which was sort of a key into the bay, mm -hmm. um, sort of where they could link up with the rest of the, uh, the Navy from the Army. So how did you become interested in reenacting? Uh, my family were all reenactors during the um, bicentennial in the 1970s, mm -hmm. and just sort of kept the tradition going. Um, I've been attending reenactments since I was just a, a little kid in, in arms, and I've been uh, reenacting the Battle of Plattsburgh for 10 years now. And so is there any training involved? Um, it's, sort of, um, it's sort of like a big club. So everybody sort of trains everyone else. You, uh, you recommend books to each other. We do a lot of outside research. And um, you sort of learn skill sets, um, making all these things. Uh, a lot of reenactors buy things, but I chose to make all of my, my uniform, my accoutrements. So you sort of you get training from your friends that way. And we also get together, and we do the military drill so that we look uh, practiced and polished like they would have. Well, tell us some of the specifics about your role in this commemoration. Um, we will be uh, over at the Kentalord House mm -hmm. um, all weekend. We'll be doing all the things Don said, and uh, we'll be there to show people what life was like 200 years ago. Um, we really sleep on uh, piles of straw with <laughs> wool blankets on them. We really cook all of our own food there. Um, we, you know, we try to use seasonal items like they would have. It will be there to just explain um, things to the public, and uh, we'll be entertaining ourselves the way they did by playing cards and dice and singing. It'll be a great time. What are some of the questions that you get from people? Oh, I get all kinds of <laughs> questions. The biggest question I think I get is, is that uniform hot? And um, <laughs> I, have, I have it sort of good as a rifleman because um, they were the light infantry, so they did a lot of running around and hiding behind trees as opposed to the normal infantry who stood face to face and shot at each other. So we wore lighter uniforms uh, mm -hmm. made out of linen in the summer, whereas everyone else wore wool. So I stay a little bit cooler. That's not all about camp life, is it? 
No. Um, last year we did something very special, which we'd never done in Plattsburgh before, and we had a street battle. Um, because as soldiers, that's what we were, were doing was battling, and we'll be doing it again this year. Um, we'll have the street battle right down the, uh, the middle of uh, Margaret Street into Bridge Street, and the people love the action. I would imagine so, and so you must have to be careful not to hurt each other. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. We only use blanks. We don't use bullets at all, and um, we've been doing it for a long time, and uh, we stay far enough away from each other that nobody will get hurt for real. So it has to be pretty well choreographed then. Oh, absolutely. Um, all of the leaders from the different uh, reenactment groups get together beforehand and uh, figure out what they'll be doing. And uh, they tell all of us um, soldiers what we'll be doing. And um, we all know each other very well. Even though we pretend to fight, we're all friends in real life. And uh, yeah, we definitely coordinate. So Sandra, four days of events can't come without an expense. Is there a cost? Um, yes, it's not cheap. It's a uh, it's a long it's a weekend a long weekend uh, full of events. So we have concerts and we have reenactments and we have a whole bunch of different pieces. On Sunday we have a children's fair. There's kids games on Saturday. It's a parade alone. But we have several con contributors from um, our area that help make the event happen. But we also have um, the the very uh, the signature Battle of Plattsburgh commemoration button, which we sell at several locations, including the Kent Delord House, and it's fifty. $15 to get the button, um, but it gets you in the door at anything that you want to do throughout Commemoration Weekend. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we have evening concerts, we have the reenactment, we have the grand encampment, um, and the children's fair. There's so many different things um, that you spot, and you, you'll get your value within the first day. And we also have our very nice Battle of Plattsburgh commemorative t-shirts that uh, will be um, helping to support the Battle of Plattsburgh commemoration so that we can have it in future years mm -hmm. as well. So, And so how can somebody find out more about the schedule of events? Well, they can go to our webpage, first of all. It's www.champlain1812.com. It's got information about the parade. It's got information about our entire schedule of events. Um, one of the big highlights for people is on Friday evening, we have a big concert on City Hall steps, so it's outdoors, and it's followed by a really wonderful um, uh, fireworks display, which we call the Rock is Red Glare fireworks, because we sing the national and the Star Spangled Banner while the, that is happening. So mm -hmm. it's really a wonderful experience. So Paul, maybe a couple minutes left, maybe you can talk a little bit more about what you'll be doing and a final word to folks if they're interested in, in seeing a, re a reenactment and, and the importance of reenactments. Oh, okay, certainly. Um, the biggest thing that we're doing is just trying to, to show people what life was like. I mean, it's uh, times have changed so much, and it's very difficult to get uh, even a glimpse into the past. And I think the, the most important thing about reenacting and um, coming to the Battle of Plattsburgh to see all this is that you can really appreciate how far we've come um, and how much we've really mended fences with our, um, our now allies, who used to be our enemies just 200 years ago, are really our, our biggest allies now. Great Britain and um, uh, Canada are really our, our best friends. And uh, to get a glimpse into that really lets us appreciate the lives that we lead now. Um, and uh, when you come to Plattsburgh, we just ask that everyone remember that we are commemorating a battle. It was um, a time when people on both sides were fighting and losing their lives. And um, But it's a great series of events, and it's really one of the best investments of $15 that you can make. And tell me a little bit about, from your perspective, as a young person participating in these kinds of events, how important that is. It's very important because the people who were participating 200 years ago were young people. Uh, the age of adulthood back then was about 16 years old. So at 16, you could join the Army. At 16, uh, that's when you'd be really starting your, your life, getting married and having children, um, you know, having your own business, having your own farm. So to, as a young person, to betray those people, I think it's incredibly important um, because we just see how much the youth of the nation built the nation and uh, continue to do so. Well, it's exciting. Well, once again, the commemoration of the Battle of Plattsburgh is September 10th through the 13th. You can get more information from the website, Champlain1812.com. I want to thank you all for being here today. It's really fascinating and great to talk to you. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.